Hello and welcome back to the first part of this series where we're going to be taking a hugging face model repository and deploying it on Amazon SageMaker using a Xenomel pipeline. In this part, we're going to be focusing on the feature engineering pipeline, which is the first of four pipelines that we need in order to do an entire MLOps workflow. This particular pipeline is very well known for all data scientists out there. This is where you take your data, you do some certain pre-processing on it, and then you return a pre-processed data set, which is going to be used in your training step. In this particular case, we're, we're using a sentiment classification model, so we need to do all of the NLP stuff, like tokenizing the data and chunking and so on and so forth. Every time this pipeline runs, it stores the tokenized data and the tokenizer, into the central artifact store that is defined in your XML stack. That could be an S3 artifact store, it could be a local file system, so on and so forth. And every time you run it, XML versions this data set for you. Let's walk into how exactly this works. So if I open up my Visual Studio code, you can see that I have an environment already. And in this environment, I can actually uh, install XML, of course and install a bunch of integrations that are needed. For example, the Hugging Face integration with XenML and S3, AWS, and so forth. This can be used, this can be done using the XenML command. The XenML integration install command simply installs the integrations using a pip install in the back. So you could also use pip instead. Then after you have your environment and your integrations installed, you need to be using stacks and connecting to a server, a XenML server, which has those stacks installed. In this particular case, I'm going to be creating a local stack and a remote stack, which is going to be running either the pipeline locally on my machine or on Kubeflow, which is defined in my AWS instance. Now, the setup and the configuration of these stacks has already been done for me. So if I do XenML stack list, I will see a whole bunch of my stacks already. Um, and you can see there are many here. And if you're interested in how to set up your local environment and how to set up these stacks, there will be more information on the readme and the documentation for this tutorial. Um, but once you've installed your stacks, come back to this video and we'll be focusing more on the pipelining code in this particular part. So go to the readme, install your stacks and come back and we'll go from there. Okay, so now that you've ins installed your stacks, what you can do is you can make a local stack live. So this is going to be running the pipelines locally. This is a bit easier than running it on Kubeflow and it's a bit faster. So we're going to be running the pipeline now and that can be done by using the run.py script. The run.py is the runner script that just is controlling all the various CLI commands that I'm doing. In this particular case, I'm running the feature pipeline, which is defined by the feature flag, and the no cache, meaning that I want XenML not to cache the steps because every time I run a pre-processing pipeline, I don't want to skip any parts. I just want to create a new data set each time. You can see that every time I run this, there's a whole bunch of logs that tell that is showing you that it's not a normal Python run, it's actually a pipeline that is running inside your computer. And at the end of it, you will get a URL, which if you click, you will be able to open up the XenML dashboard where you can, again, see the code that you ran, the configuration of that code, and a whole bunch of other things that you, that you would need in order to reproduce this experiment. Now, for this particular, um, pipeline, the most important artifacts that are produced are the tokenizer and the tokenized data set, because these are going to be inputs of the training pipeline. And you can see if you click on one of these artifacts, XenML has given it a unique ID signifying that it is stored in a separate location and is a version of your data set. You can even see where it's stored. This is my local path. If you go back to your pipelines, and you see all of the runs that happen on your particular pipeline, you can see that each of these feature engineering pipelines has have produced different versions of the tokenizer and the tokenized data set. And this can all be seen with a very simple 
UI. So this was the feature engineering. We're, we're next going to be talking about the training pipeline.